Can Fraser Minton make the Maple Leafs? Is the Nylander at center experiment over before it started? And I've got a rant to make about the deployment of Jake McCabe. All that and more coming up on today's edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook. It's the official sportsbook of the Locked On Network. Make every moment more right now. New customers can get uh, can bet $5 and get a $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Uh, welcome into the show, everybody, and I'm sure... Uh, many of you guys are probably in the same boat as Dave and I, where we are just, you know, diehard Toronto sports people. And we're reeling after that loss uh, last night to the Blue Jays, getting swept, falling two to nothing, uh, both in the score of last night's game and the series to the Minnesota Twins. And uh, I don't know, I was trying to think back because I remember being pretty frustrated on how things unraveled on the Leafs season as well. And maybe things are a little fresh. Maybe, you know, we give it a, a week or two to have this discussion again. But, you know, whose season to you was more disappointing, the Leafs or the Jays? To me, it's the Jays, man. Like, I to go two games without scoring a single run in a baseball game. Like, oh, they got one. They, 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 right. they got the one. one. One run in two games. I'm sorry. Yeah, the one measly run they were able to score in two games. It was the Rays that were unable to score runs. Mm-hmm. They had one run as well. Shows you how apparently the AL East was supposed to be the hardest division in baseball. <laughs> and then pro- both both teams ended up falling out uh, that that one pretty early. But no, it's inexcusable to score one run in two games. To see this team that had so much promise a few years ago, we saw a 2020 pandemic year. It was starting to get better. They had stars. They were adding good pitching. And then for all to just discombobulate like that, like you lost to the Minnesota Twins. You didn't lose yeah. to a fantastic team. This is, I mean, yeah, I get the Leafs lost to the Panthers, but they had to go through the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. Yeah. I, I think ultimately, that is where you probably draw the line and, and you can answer that and say it's got to be the Jays. At least. The Maple Leafs, they did win a round. They did exercise that demon. So they won I mean, games in the playoffs. Come they on, they won games, right? I mean, it was only five. You know, they they but they they won games at the very least. It wasn't a quantum leap uh, from the three that they had won. You know, in the previous few years, but at least they won some games here. And you know, you could at least look at the deployment, and you could say, okay, whatever. You know, that's basically how things were going to shake out anyways. But some of the things that the Blue Jays did in in last night's game in particular, I mean, this isn't Locked on Jays. I did break it down on the Locked on Jays podcast. You can go check that out wherever you get your podcast from. But I think that's what makes it more uh, upsetting is like, you know, the Leafs, okay, you can say that the Stars were quiet and they didn't score, sure. But at least, you know, you you can say that they gave themselves the best shot to win, I suppose. There was just many situations like that situation to or that decision to bring Barrios out of the game for no reason was inexcusable. And it's it's interesting because I think that although we saw a very similar ending to the the you know Blue Jays and the Leafs season where they both, you know, just disappointingly ended their season prematurely. You look at how the the Maple Leafs offseason went uh went down and what we were saying i guess at the end of that series season was got to do something different with the core four right can't run it back with the same group but could see them make a, a coaching change could definitely see them making a change uh or, or yeah could see them making a change at, at the coach but probably not making a change uh, to the front office but on ice we need to see some change It's kind of opposite, though, for the Blue Jays, which I find interesting is I think a lot of the outcry is more so on 
management and uh, and you know the manager, the coach himself as well than there is on the 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 Jays themselves. And the the Leafs didn't make any changes to their core, and they changed the GM. Uh, I'm curious to see if the Blue Jays stay the course or they make some adjustments here. I feel like the Blue Jays will see more turnover uh, off the field than the Leafs did this offseason. Well, considering they bring in this new regime of Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins and Ash Atkins, as we call them, and you get rid of Alex Anthopoulos, who was like the golden child, got the Jays as close to the World Series as they've been since 93. Yeah. Let they won series, go. won multiple series with that guy. Yep. He goes to the Dodgers. He plays a part in them winning the, the World Series, goes to Atlanta, does the same thing. Like, at some point, eyes have to open here, right? Yeah, you can blame players for how they perform, but the signs were there that this team needed something different last year. They addressed issues, but then there were issues popping up this year, and they refused to address them. It was almost like they were setting this team up for failure. And it know. happened, right? <laughs> I I think we'll see some change. Uh, much like we did with the Maple Leafs this year, there was quite a bit of turnover after a disappointing season. I'd imagine we'll see similar situations with uh, with the Blue Jays. But again, if you want to hear a full breakdown on, on my thoughts and, and some pretty large rants that I had on the Jays in this game that we just witnessed, uh, you can go check that out on the Locked On. Blue Jays podcast, myself and Sean Woodley uh, kind of broke things down for that one. Uh, as for the Leafs, though, let's get into uh, some Leafs talk here. Team had a good practice up in Gravenhurst uh, yesterday. Uh, they're going to travel back for the game tonight against Detroit. No indication what the lineup uh, is going to look like or who's going to be playing as of the time of this recording. Keith, pretty mum at practice, not saying who will or won't be playing. Still figuring out, he says. Uh, we'll, once we figure it out, we'll, we'll tweet it out on our account at Lockdown Leafs like we usually do. Um, but there were some interesting developments at practice yesterday, to say the least, that we're going to discuss on today's podcast um, so why don't we take a quick break when we get back, we'll get into our lease chatter. We'll talk about, uh, where we saw William Nylander at practice today, which definitely raised an eyebrow and, uh, a specific, a, a, an interesting name that apparently Sheldon Keith believes has a shot to make the roster. We'll talk about that as well. And I've got to, dis- I've got something to get off my chest about how I think they've kind of wasted an opportunity with Jake McCabe here in the preseason. We'll chat about that as well. Uh, But before we get into all that, let me tell everyone about one of today's show sponsors. And of course, it's our good friends over at FanDuel. Uh, It's North America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, when you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, the player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NHL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the Locked On Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. It's Mike DeStefano and Dave Morissuti. We're hosts here on the Locked On Lease show. We got uh, new content coming to you guys each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. So if you are new to the podcast, appreciate you giving us a shot. Hopefully, well, hopefully you enjoyed the, the random Jays banter off the top. We don't typically go in depth about the Blue Jays or anything else that's not hockey or Leafs related, but obviously it, it was a, a big talking point. Uh, in the city of Toronto tonight, and and will continue to be over the next forty eight hours. So we we had to get a little bit of Jay's talk in there. But if you are focused on you know wanting to know what's going on with the Maple Leafs, hopefully we can provide some uh, some in depth, uh, up to the minute uh, analysis and and keep you guys uh, in the in the know of what's going on. So make sure that you're uh, locked into Lockdown Leafs all season long. Find us wherever you find your podcast. Also up on YouTube and also. Please, if you enjoy the show, leave us a like and a comment down below. That helps us uh, a lot with the algorithms and uh, all that good stuff. That said, let's get into our Leafs discussion here today, Dave. Uh, We had mentioned that there were some interesting developments at practice today, uh, or yesterday, rather. And I guess the main one 
is where we saw William Nylander lined up because it wasn't in the three C hole where he's been all camp long. It was right back with his old buddy, John Tavares. Uh, is the Willie at center experiment over before it started? Dave, should we read into this? What are your thoughts? I don't think so. I The reason, I mean, obviously because Fraser Minton was at center there, he wanted to have, uh, he, where are you going to play Nylander, right? So it just, they, they always said they can go with Nylander anytime on the wing. They know that that's a thing. They were giving him that time at center. And if you're going to have Fraser Minton potentially, right, as you kind of mentioned, try to make this roster, it's not going to be as a fourth line center. It's going to be as a third line center, right? Yeah, so <laughs> there's only there's only one third line center spot. Neil Anders taking it. So for this, I guess probably for this exhibition game coming up, that's probably what they're going to have Fraser Minton play just to see if he's if he's got it. So I don't think the Neil Anders experiment's over. I just think that for other roster reasons. They want to see can Fraser Minton be a better option at center. Yeah, and and Sheldon Keith realistically uh, did comment on it after practice and gave his explanation. And he said, "quote Wanted to get Minton in and still maintain John and Austin and, and Camp, uh, so it's a good way to do that. Uh, it's not a reflection on Willie at all. It's more we need to make a decision on Fraser, obviously. So you get him into a position to play." With the group, so this is more so uh, just them getting a look at Fraser Minton and, and trying just to get one last final look, I guess, before they have to make the decision. I mean, we'll get to the decision on Fraser Minton and whether or not he has a chance. It sounds like he actually does, based off of the comments that uh, you know Sheldon Keefe said at practice. Again, we'll get to that momentarily, but I will say this, and it's it's the going back to the Nylander and and. I, I don't know if it's PTSD, but I just cringe anytime I see Nylander on a line alongside John Tavares. It's a duo that just has not worked for whatever reason for the last two years. Like it's legitimately been two, maybe even two and a half, three years where this duo just cannot, uh, you know, work together for whatever reason. I was taking a look at the numbers like William Nylander. When he and Tavares are on the ice, the Leafs are only scoring 44% of the goals at five on five. So they're getting scored on more than they're being than they're scoring themselves. 12% more goals scored on than they're scoring themselves. When Nylander's not with John Tavares, and when he's on a by, you know, playing with whoever it is, either on the third line, fourth line, you know, a mixed bag, playing with Austin, whatever it may be, without John Tavares, William Nylander is on the ice. 60% of the times the goals scored are by Maple Leafs players. Like for whatever reason, this guy just him and Tavares can't get it done. Um, and and I just cringe every time I see these two on a line together. I hope the experiment down the middle isn't over strictly because that probably puts Nylander back on a, a line with Tavares. And I, I just simply don't want to see that anymore, Dave. I really, really don't. I was more hoping to see. Nylander and Matthews together more so much better Ma you know, much better. Than Tavares. which is why again as you said the having Nylander as a third third line center actually made a little more sense if you want to spread things out and not have them together too 100% so just looking at the numbers right when Nylander's playing with John Tavares now granted I know Tavares Matthews different players Matthews clearly a much more prolific goal scorer um, and Tavares sometimes, you know, placed in less favorable matchups than, than, um, you know, a Matthews and Nylander pairing was, was put in a lot of the time because Tavares and Marner would get those defensive responsibilities. Now that said, when Tavares and Nylander are playing, you look at the last two seasons at five on five, they're a dash 13 dash 13 in the last, uh, two years at five on five Nylander and Tavares Matthews. And Nylander, the last two seasons, plus 17 when they're out there. Uh, a goals for percentage of about 61% when he's playing with Austin Matthews. So, how yeah. About, how about uh, Marner and Tavares? Marner and Tavares is also a lot better. It's up in the 55 to 60 percentile. Like, it, it, it just makes sense. Like, 
this is the point that I want to get at. This is what I want to bring to the pod is today when I saw those lines, I'm like, okay, if you're experimenting Minton at 3C, I don't want to be seeing Nylander at 2 right wing. I would rather see him up and Marner down with him. That's what I would have preferred to see at today's practice is Bertuzzi, Matthews, Nylander, Domi, Tavares, Marner, and then whatever you want is your third line. Minton, Nyes, Yarncroft is the line we saw today. And then McMahon, Camp, and Reeves was uh, you know, the presumed fourth line that they want to get a look at. That's what I would have preferred to see, Dave. And for me, you know, when the Leafs came into this year, I, and we just talked about playoff failures, things that didn't work well in the playoffs. You saw how things didn't quite work out well in the playoffs when Matthews and Marner were together. And we talked about, you know, now's the time to make changes to the core four because what's becoming even more clear is that Sheldon Keefe, for some odd reason, is afraid to change that duo. I've seen other teams decide, you know what? We need to, we can't be married to a particular duo all the time. We need to move guys. And granted, Sheldon Keefe has made changes before, but mm-hmm. he's never stuck with them, especially when they work. So if you're not having Nylander at 3C, I'm totally on board with you that we cannot go back to the old ways. Even with Bertuzzi in the top six, and apparently Max Domi, although I, Matthew Nyes would probably be a better fit in the top six because of how his all-around game well, yeah, if, if it's going to de- be deployed as a shutdown line like Tavares, Marner, and then having Nyes in there as a shutdown, although, you know, have a nice playmaker would be good for Tavares, although I guess you could also say that's what Marner's there for. So, yeah, Nyes probably would be better in that regard. But right. Like, your point. I, I just want to see something change because, yes, I, and during the preseason, we're seeing Matthews and Marner do some nice things together, but that's so not my- he, I got the exact number. So uh, you're looking. My, is this the last two years? Yeah. So the last two seasons, uh, Nylander and Tavares. Like when Tavares is is with Nylander, he's a dash thirteen. When Tavares has been with Marner, they've got eleven more goals scored than their opposition. Fifty seven percent goals for totals with Marner, as opposed to just forty four percent with Nylander. So it it, it works better for everybody when those guys are playing and with each other even marner like marner's uh without no, actually no that's not true marner's 62 percent without Tavares. yeah but, i mean we all we already know that marner matthews can put up yeah, that works just but, so that people also don't go on this anti-analytics rant hear me out <laughs> when you watch the games it actually looks better too. Like, yeah, that's true. Just, you know, <laughs> I, I got to put this out after what happened with the Blue Jays that we're not just going to put numbers out there without the eye test matching up with what we've like. I've I've been calling like when I see Matthews and Nealand together, I I actually like it so much better. Right? They're getting yeah, like they're getting K- yeah, absolutely. I love Matthews and and Nylander together. I think that they're terrific. I mean, Matthews is good with whoever he plays with, realistically. He's just that good of a player. But to me, the way that Marner can elevate Tavares makes this team deeper and, to me, better. Um, and we we did see that for most of last year, to be quite honest with you, which is why when I saw it at practice uh, up in Gravenhurst, I was like, ah, let's not go back to that. But uh, we'll see, man. I mean, temporary because Keith very temporary. I'm not, I just don't want to throw out a whole blender out. Let's very see. yeah yeah very temporary um pretty much it was even that was specifically said by keith right who came out and was just saying it's not a reflection at willie we literally just want to get a look at fraser minton in that role so we had to put willie somewhere so that's essentially what uh what happened there um speaking of fraser minton why don't we talk a little bit more about the comments that were made and maybe discuss if there is an actual shot for uh you know the 19 year old to make this team out of camp so we'll have that discussion we'll chat about jake mccabe and where the team maybe did themselves a disservice with his usage this preseason we'll talk about that more on the other side but first dave how about a word from indeed yes uh when you're drafting your fancy team do you ever wish you could do the same thing with your business team if you're building a roster to win the league 
You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employees find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Candidates you invite to apply through instant match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search according to U.S. Indeed data. With instant match, as soon as you sponsor posts, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description and you can invite them to apply right away. Indeed does all the hard work for you. Sponsor job and boom, instant match shows you the candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description immediately after you post. With instant match, you can start hiring fast. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. And Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that make your must have job requirements. Indeed knows that when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. So visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Uh, the Leafs were up in Gravenhurst over the last couple of days. They'll make their way back into Toronto for a game tonight against the Detroit Red Wings. And although we don't know exactly who's going to be playing in this game, no official roster has been uh, given out based uh, you know, at the time of this recording. I think we can both confidently say we believe Fraser Minton will be in the lineup based on the fact that he was ex- being experimented with as the third line center alongside Matthew Nyes and Cal Yarncroft in practice today. Um, when it comes to Fraser Minton, though, we'd had this conversation a couple of days ago, and we were talking about guys who we've seen stock go up. Nyes was in the in that mix there. But one of the other names that we really had actually been fond of over the course of the preseason was Fraser Minton, especially in that series against the the Habs this past weekend. Thought that he saw his stock rise quite a bit. Well, apparently Sheldon Keefe also thought that was the case and uh, says that Fraser Minton has a legitimate chance at making this team. Um, what do you make of those comments? I, I, I think he's played extremely well. I just didn't think that he actually had a real shot just based on numbers. Uh, but it sounds like Keith is going to give him a legitimate opportunity. Well, because of all we we literally went through the whole roster breakdown, and we're trying to figure out how are they going to get this all to work if they want Fraser Minton. They, the only way Fraser Minton can make make the team is if he's taking someone's spot that's going to be placed on waivers. They don't have a lot of cap space to just bring up Fraser Minton unless he's again playing and somebody's injured right somebody could be injured too but that's where i was struggling with this but he's he's still here first off he's still here secondly he's practicing on on an nhl line right now that to me indicates they want to give him as fair of an opportunity because this past weekend they put him on a line with rookies right nyes and cowan and look what he did they all produced they i think sheldon keith has seen what these younger guys can do and in some ways i think he wants to keep that confidence at an all-time high he can't he wants to push and see how far this thing can go right yeah. whether he has a realistic shot he's gonna say that like what do you want sheldon keep also to say ah no we don't really we're just we're just putting this kid through all the horses and not like all this trouble to not have him on the team. He could, though, and it wouldn't really surprise me if he did say that. He said, well, the kid's 19. Like, we want to get looks at him, give him opportunities, but ultimately it's a man's league. Like, he could have come up with a pretty cliche answer. I, that also would not have surprised me. Yeah, no, it wouldn't have surprised me either because we have seen that. Um, yeah, so, like, I think it was also notable that, I mean, like, Luke Fox tweeted that out. And, like, these guys aren't tweeting. Like, they're going to tweet out everything Sheldon Keefe says. But they pull out the notable things. And like the only thing I didn't hear is how Sheldon Keefe said it too, right? We just take it from what Twitter says. I would have liked to have had sound mm-hmm. of him saying that. But to me, it's what we've been asking for too is I want to see a little bit of youth inject into this lineup. And I think Fraser Minton, what people the people look at his age, but they don't look at the maturity that comes with that. How like I didn't even realize, I don't know if you knew this, 
He's a concert piano player. He's already I didn't like, know this. I, I actually <laughs> did know this. And the He's only reason why I'll tell you why I know. I interviewed him last year uh for Leafs Lunch, and it was like one of the random factoids that I had dug up on Fraser Minton. Um, I remember reading it like during the draft, you know, on his profile or something like that. I think maybe one of like Scott Wheeler, one of those draft guys had it, uh, had it, you know, in there. So that I did actually know that weirdly enough, but so already, as you know, that puts them way higher up in my books. Yes. Right? For you, for you, Mr. Uh, Piano man, it, little it, Billy Joel. It just, it just shows also the, you know, this, this is not somebody who's just all about hockey. There's other yeah. th- interests. I, 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 all I'm saying is there's a maturity to Fraser Minton on the ice. And off the ice, you hear the, his teammates speak like glowingly about him. Even like William Nylander has been, who's usually the silent, not very talkative William Nylander, gave this guy such gl- like great reviews. Almost made it seem like this guy should be in the NHL. Obviously, yeah. he pump up the kids' tires a little bit, but like this is somebody who... Clearly, this you know the organization believes in. Yeah, I mean, of course they do. Like they they spent uh, a pretty high draft pick on them. You know, early second round draft pick. It was their first pick of that round ra- uh, of the draft because that was the one that they had traded back with the um, uh, who's the Mrazic? That was the Mrazic deal. They moved back with their first and and uh, ended up taking Fraser Minton early in the second. I do recall last year though, like he made it very deep into camp before getting injured and it's not as though I think he had a chance to make the team last year, but he made it, he made an impression on Sheldon Keefe. And I remember Keefe talking about that a season ago. So it doesn't surprise me that, you know, he has that long memory and he said, this kid impressed me at 18 Let's see if he can continue to do it at, as a 19 year old. I mean, if he can, if he makes this team, um, it's clearly because he forced his way onto the team. It's not like uh, he's not going to be. Uh, there's no way that you could say, "Oh, for cap reasons, he can't be on this club," right? If he's not there, it's because they want to go with somebody else. Because if they do send Fraser Minton down, he cannot be recalled uh, at all this season. Um, so he would be down basically for the whole year. So they got to make sure that they do want to make that decision and do want to send him down to the minors. They could give him like a nine game look see if if they want to try and do that um but to your point that that's where it's like okay well then they got to send someone else down because they can't keep extra players on their roster we know that to be the case um but he's played really well i mean you look back on the back-to-back that he played against montreal and you think of the players he was up against like he's playing against nick suzuki and, and holding his own against suzuki holding his own against brendan gallagher you know in that lineup like they had some of their better players out there cole caulfield like and fraser minton was on the ice against those players and, and holding his own like i said they well they won the the two games in montreal so i it wouldn't at this point i guess completely shock me if he did make the team and that's based off of merit based on he's he he would have earned it based on play um but it is a bit of a numbers game so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of turns out but it's nice to see some of the least draft picks uh, and young players really pushing for spots and pushing some of these veterans that's uh that's a good thing i will say that that would be a not great thing for noah gregor though if that were to occur or a sam lafferty or you know obviously a bobby mcmahon who's um just getting back from his injury is yet to play in a game uh, i think he'll probably play tonight he was on a line with holmberg and lafferty in practice so i imagine he get an opportunity in tonight's game against detroit um all right a- anything else you want to mention on on fraser minton before we move on to uh this jake mccabe thing that i i want to bring up no i mean you brought up gregor and lafferty i think them being on a line with holmberg Kind of also tells you where I, maybe where they are as well, uh, just a little bit in that Sheldon Keefe is sending a bit of message that we want to give the younger guys a look. I mean, the veterans have done what they've done. Let's give the young guys. And I, I want to see Bobby McMahon get into a game. Yeah, like that's. I think that's that he needs it because it's been a little unfair that he hasn't been able to get in because of the injury that happened last season. And he's not waiver exempt, so if they do opt to not hold on to McMahon and they try and put him through waivers. Like he will be available to 31 other teams. Um, And I, I 
think a team based off of how, you know, good he actually looked uh, not only in the American League last year, but when he came up and played that handful of games with the Maple Leafs before getting injured, there's a chance that there's a team that'll be like looking to take a shot at him. So uh, if you're the Maple Leafs, make sure you don't uh, want McMahon on this team because he might not make it through uh, waivers. So, yeah, I, I, I like that he's getting an opportunity probably with Camp and Reeves because that would be his line mates in, in an actual game as a fourth liner, you would think. So good opportunity for him to make an impression uh, for sure if he gets into this game. Okay. Next order of business that we got to quickly talk about before we jet today. So I've been toying with this thought, and it's not a relatively new thought of mine, but Jake McCabe, I remember when prior to the trade, there was a lot of discussion on who the Leafs should bring in. And a big reason why McCabe was brought up a lot was because of his versatility. He's somebody who, when he played in Chicago and played in Buffalo, did play on both the left side, which is his natural side as a left-hand shot, but was also capable of playing on the right side. And he did that quite often um, in his previous two stops in the NHL. Why haven't they experimented that with the Leafs? He's played only on the left side with the Maple Leafs so far. Uh, you know, it, it made sense last year, I guess, coming in from the trade. Just a guy who's new to the team, new to the system, doesn't know the players as well. Keep him on his dominant hand. Maybe the game could come a little easier for him. But now we're getting to a point here in preseason. And even more specifically with the injury uh, that we had to Klingberg, which, okay, if you want to keep him on the left side, him and Klingberg play games together and try to develop chemistry. Makes sense because that's what you're going to, you know, try and have as your day one second pair. All right, sure. But Klingberg's been out now for a couple of weeks. Why didn't you use this time? And he's expected to come back to, to practice uh, today or tomorrow. Why didn't you use that time to maybe experiment with McCabe on the right side and try and build up some of that depth on the right side? Like, I, I just... I don't know why Sheldon Keefe has stapled this man to the left side of the ice when in the past he has been comfortable playing the other side and the team kind of needs some right shot guys on, uh, you know, depth pieces at the very least. Well, one thing I'll say is, yeah, at least you would know if Jake McCabe is capable of making that switch, right? You would like to see that first and foremost. Secondly, the only thing I can think of is if Sheldon Keefe proposed the idea to Jake McCabe and Jake McCabe maybe squashed it and maybe said, I want to play the left. We've seen that happen wow. before as well. Yeah, and, and I remember this being a question that was asked to Sheldon Keefe last year when the trade went through, and he said, no, we see him as a left shot guy. We'll, we'll keep him on his, his dominant side, which whatever. If that's the case throughout the regular season when the games matter, okay, if you want to keep him there, you know, that makes sense, right? That's he brought him in to be the Jake McCabe or the Jake Muzzin replacement. Jake Muzzin was primarily a left shot guy on the second pair. And that's what you brought him into to replace. All right, I get it. You got him there. But it's the preseason. And now is when you try things, right? Would it really kill you to go out for one game with Riley and McCabe as a, as a potential pair? See if that works. You know what I mean? Like we've always talked about how Riley needs a steady Eddie player and you know Jake McCabe there's some similarities to just like a ruggedness defensive defensive style that you know the the Hainsies and the Shens of the past who he's had success with like I know he has success with uh TJ Brody but you know it's just something different where if Brody gets hurt it's pretty much all right you're gonna move Lilligren up you get to you're you're gonna move Klingberg up all right now what are you gonna do you know what I mean so I just thought maybe now is the time to do that type of stuff, and especially with that injury to Klingberg, where McCabe's not growing any chemistry with the guy anyways. Might as well have just experimented, see what it looks like. But no. No, we 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 can't have that. We can't have nice we can't have nice things, Mike. But like it just it it bothers me. I don't like I don't know why. I like, guess because I had it in my head that when this trade went down and this is, this happened before the trade for Luke Shen, keep that in mind. Um, I thought, Ooh, this could be a really good partner for Morgan Riley. That was the first thing that went through my head. And then, uh, 
don't think he had played a single second with Morgan Riley at five on five. So the cha- trade for Jake Muzzin and it came out. Remember that trade for Muzzin came down and people and people were asking Mike Babcock, so are you going to play uh, Jake Muzzin with Morgan Riley? Nope. He no, no, we're not. Because <laughs> Jake Muzzin, even though he had played some time on the right, didn't like it. And Morgan Riley wasn't too keen on the idea either. But yeah. I mentioned Jake McCabe has done it before. And the last thing I want to see happen is, you know, knock on wood, an injury happens to Clinton. Well, Klingberg's injured now, and then maybe that gets reaggravated. Or if Brody goes down or Lilligren goes down, I want the team to be like, well, we didn't foresee this happening. Hey, Jake, you want to you wanna do us a little favor and move over to the right side? And then we're going to have this conversation, and Mike's going to be like, I told you so. Exactly, because I guarantee you this will happen. I guarantee you this is not the last time that I'm going to bring this up where it's like, hey, you know, maybe a lineup change could be this. Try and McCabe on the right with player X. Like, I, this probably will not be the final time this gets brought up this season. Uh, but what is always said by Sheldon Keefe, and it totally makes sense, is now is the time to try different things. The games do not matter. This is the time you do it and you experiment. Well, why aren't you experimenting with Jake McCabe on the right side? Please answer me this, Sheldon. Just try it. See what it looks like. If it doesn't work, all right, go back to the left and we can move on. But why not give it a shot? See if it works. Maybe it does. And maybe you have a another option on the right side. Worst case scenario, Sheldon. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Uh, just something that I wanted to get off my chest a little bit there. Something that I've been thinking about over the course of the last couple of days and thought I would uh I would bring it up. So that's uh yeah, that's all I got. Uh anything that you want to bring up today, Dave, before we sign off. I will be in attendance at this game tonight, the uh, oh. season. So my eyes will be on Fraser Minton in this one. Ooh, like it. Love it. Beautiful. Yeah. Enjoy the game. I actually really afford these tickets. It's a little more easier to go to these games than regular season games. Did you buy them or were they get were they gift? The first ones I went to were gifted. This one is we bought them because we it's a yearly thing. We try to go to one preseason game. We splurge a little bit to get to the one hundreds, which are like a third of the price of a regular season ticket. <laughs> so well, I mean, I, I would I would assume that we'll see a fair amount of NHLers there tonight. So it'll be close to a regular season game Look behind the net when the Leafs are in their in the attacking zone so the where they shoot twice i will be somewhere behind the net not that close because i wasn't going to spend that much but if they go on a wide angle or you know bigger wide angle shot keep an eye off me so if you recall the photo of when uh mitch marner went full bobby Orr. If you were there for that game, based on where you're sitting, would you have been in that photo? I don't think so. Do you remember the photo I'm talking about? I, I see you that. scrounging around trying to pull oh, it up here to get it. I know the photo because I actually had it saved on my computer somewhere. But no, I don't think I would be in view of that just because I'm near the like where the where you get out to get into the ah, That's where gosh. I'm at. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, enjoy the game, Dave. Uh, enjoy the game. Everybody else uh, should be uh, a good one with a bunch of the regulars in attendance. So uh, enjoy it. All right. That'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Lease podcast on all podcast platforms uh, as well. We are up on YouTube. We got new shows coming out to you uh, Monday through Friday. So receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morris Sudi. Follow the show as well at Locked on Leafs. Go ahead, smash that like button if you're watching here on YouTube. Let us know down below your thoughts on anything we had to talk about. Does Minton have a chance to play? Do you also hate the fact of Nylander and Tavares together? Uh, do you also want to see Jake McKay practice maybe on the right side? I don't know. Let me know anything that you have uh, in the comments section down below uh we'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow enjoy the game tonight leafs and uh, red wings seven o'clock puck drop until then keep locked right here on lockdown leafs